Good morning, folks. As we watch another Plasma Filament Exodus, we've got nine links to hit today, including three space science stories, three on weather, and two major reports. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was mostly quiet. Still no sunspots or solar flares. The trailing northern coronal hole is now easily visible as the southern system is rotating through, with its leading edge having hit Earth with solar wind last night. The rise up is easily seen in purple plasma speed, but on the left side scale, we find that it was unable to crack 500 kilometers per second. This is a weak to moderate stream only, and geomagnetic conditions remain relatively unperturbed. We're going to Madagascar, where the death toll stands at 9 and is likely to rise. Thousands left homeless as the cyclone hit the northwestern portion of the country, rain to a deluge, winds like a wrecking ball. The U.S. climate report for November is out, and as one might expect provided their memory is working, blue takes the win for the month. But I found the whole year thus far, January through November, to be equally interesting and mixed, parts of Montana having their coldest year ever. And while the last few years have seen us at top five hottest marks for the year at this point, this year the country is riding the average temperatures from historical records. While the cold and snow have done that job, there's another icy concern looking ahead for the United States, the mega hail inundations. Not only in total hailstones, but in the enormous size of the hailstones. They say that those tremendous hail rocks have been creeping eastward from the Rockies to the central and midwest states, and it's only going to get worse. Let's jump out to Mars, shall we? We're still talking water. Heck, we're still talking ice, but instead of surface accumulation, we're hunting the deep here. For those who don't know, Mars has tons of water. It used to have oceans, and while much was lost to space, much remains locked below. Kind of like how Earth has twice the ocean's worth of water locked in the mantle. Up next, we're heading out to LB1. Hopefully we recall that scientists claimed a nearly impossible black hole or plasma nucleus exists there, up to 70 times the mass of the sun, about five to eight times more massive than is supposed to be possible for stellar mass examples in the galaxy. Three papers hit archive in one day, all thrashing the concept. This and the second one are virtually moot, however, as they just rehash what the original scientists said when they suggested it was a strange find, an impossible one because no, it's not expected or able to reconcile the models. Only the third has a legitimate new argument, claiming the original scientists mistook the binary orbit for that of a black hole or plasma nucleus. Anyway, this is the science version of a boxing match. Now, Let's get an example of a super thick galactic disk, about as thick as they should be possible. We almost always see a halo of material and stars above and below the galactic disk plane, but to find an old thick disk 2.4 times the width of the central plane is quite unusual indeed. They say the creation of the thick disk stole material from the interior plane and stifled its star formation which I might point out is likely the reason it is so thin, which is likely the reason why the thick disk is perceived as being so big. Okay, you ready for the big topic? Earth's magnetic field. Sure, but one stop at the door. Greenland evidence shows that Earth's field is older than we thought. It was here for the start of life. Most scientists agree you won't have much luck with life on Earth without one, and of course this matters because Earth's is fading right now and shifting and reversing, and yesterday, the 2020 World Magnetic Model was released. We have the most recent pole positions and some visuals that really help elucidate the trends. First, as was speculated back in February for their first ever out of cycle update, the North Magnetic Pole's motion has now blown it past the geographic North Pole after spending hundreds to a few thousands of years in Canada. Showing the North Pole motion tracking over 400 years here, the deeper red to purple is slow motion long ago, the yellow is the more recent, faster motion, from a few kilometers per decade to dozens of kilometers every year. And this can be seen much more easily on the Mercator map where both the acceleration and bend over the top back down can be noticed. When we recall that the South Magnetic Pole is way ahead, having already left Antarctica, south of Australia, we realize the poles are still on collision course, still set to approximately be Indonesia, as positive and negative will attract each other ever more as we go down the rabbit hole of the latest magnetic excursion of Earth. We see these excursions going back in history about every 12,000 years. The last one, 
about 12,000 years ago. And what do you know, the field is shifting and changing like it hasn't done in thousands of years. We greatly appreciate your support. Our movies and videos on this magnetic reversal topic are linked below. They're at our channel page and our website homepage. Once again, while I am banned on Twitter four more days, please feel free to post the earthquake alert maps from our app. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.